Easy, James here, and as you may know, I give advice and tips on the art of DJing. Sound familiar? That's because everyone says that. Everyone's doing these videos, everyone's saying practice and enjoy. And you can bet anything that if I've done a video on it, one of the other people on YouTube has done a video on it. But there's one subject that nobody seems to have touched on yet, which I think is really important, having very recently seen some quite shocking things, and that is electrical safety. Now, being an electrician, I see some pretty shocking things. Get it? Shocking? Do you like what I did there? That was lame, wasn't it? Sorry. Anyway, no, I see some pretty eye-watering stuff for real, seriously. Like, I've seen sellotape dodgy repair jobs. I've even seen plasters being used as insulation tape. That is really dangerous. So, that leads me to believe that a lot of people don't, you know, have respect for that shit that comes out of your wall socket. And seriously, if you don't have respect for it, it will fuck you up. Now, before you think it is, this is not going to be one of your typical kind of, you know, electrical safety guides. Don't eat and drink and tip fluids over your equipment, because that's not electrical safety, that's just common sense. If you've got loads of expensive equipment around, don't eat and drink near it. That's, yeah, you know I mean, I'm sure everyone understands that. But then some pe uh, common sense does seem to escape some people. It's kind of like, where did this happen? Well, I was leaning over my mixer drinking a cup of tea, and then, you know, it's just common sense, just don't do it. But what I'm talking about is something that a lot of people don't really think about. So, you know, I'll just go over a few things that you can do to just help be a bit more safe and stop things from burning your house down. Now, looking at it generally, in the UK at least, okay, average homes have, you know, maybe a couple of double sockets per room, if you're lucky, if your house is new enough to have ring mains. But, you know, still, four sockets, that's not going to be enough. I mean, that part of my room alone requires ten plugs. So what do we do? We start piling loads of these things into plug sockets, and then we start plugging loads of stuff in. Now, don't worry, this is not going where you think it's going. I'm not going to say stop using these things, because, well, we need them. You've only got enough plug sockets in the wall, so you've got to use these things. But what people tend to do is they'll plug that in and they'll plug another one of these into that one, another one of them into that one, and then you'll have five of these in a row, and then you know you, you end up with loads of plugs all plugged into one lead. Now, what you want to try and do, okay, is spread them out, okay? So if you've got maybe ten plugs to plug in, let's say, and you've got one double socket, rather than plugging one lead in and then plugging another lead into this one going off to that one, try just plugging two leads into both sockets and then have two leads plugged, one in each socket. It's a bit safer than having two of them plugged into one extension lead, but also you're not going to go overloading the first extension lead. These things can only take up to 13 amps anyway, and if you go over that, thankfully Edison has very kindly invented that little device called a fuse, and that will just blow anyway. Saying that though, you need to make sure what you're plugging in first, because if you've got one lead going into the other, okay, and you've got, say, a lamp, a mixer, another lamp, uh, a deck, a TV, something like that, you know, that's fine, that's alright, you can have all that kind of stuff on there. However, if you've got like three power amps, a really powerful PC, a plasma TV, and a kettle, and all that kind of stuff on there, you're going to be overloading this pretty quickly, so you need to work out what your equipment burns up, okay, how many amps that your equipment draws, so you know how much you can plug into one lead before you start popping fuses. Because it is irritating, let's face it, you don't want to be in the middle of a mix, turn your amp up a bit, bang, the fuse blows. You look a bit of a dick, don't you? So you want to make sure that you ain't going to be popping fuses. So here's an easy way you can work out how many amps something draws, because a lot of the time it's not actually stated on the back. Okay, so what you want to do now, unless you're a mathematical genius, in which case, good on you, is get yourself a calculator because you're going to need it, right? Now most bits of kit, like I say, don't actually show you how many amps it draws in the back because there's differences between RMS and peak and all that rubbish. So basically, it will tell you how many watts it burns up, okay? So, you want to take your watts, and you know your line voltage, if you live in the UK that's 240. Now, here's an easy equation you can do, and work it out on your calculator and find out, okay? Amps equals watts divided by volts, okay? So look at it this way. If you've got an amp that's 500 watts, yeah? Runs at 240 volts. 500 divided by 240 equals 2.08. So that's about 2 amps. There you go. Simple as that. You know that amp burns up 2 amps when it's at max volume. But you don't need to look at it at average. You need to look at it in the sense of 
that's the maximum that thing will ever draw. Don't look at it as RMS because you might crank it up a bit louder than usual. Now saying that, there's one thing that I need to put straight, okay? Now if you don't know what one of these are, you've probably never used one, okay? Basically, it's got two plugs on there, you plug that one into one socket and that's it, you get two sockets out of one. Now, you buy one of those in there and that gives you an extra socket on that extension lead. Now, a lot of people would regard that as dangerous. A lot of people say these things are dangerous, don't use them, okay? Well, no, that's rubbish. You can use them, they're not dangerous. But again, you need to be careful what you're plugging into it. This thing can only take 13 amps, same as this thing can only take 13 amps. However, like I say, if you've only got a lamp, a mixer, two decks and a small hi-fi system, that's not going to burn up much at all, so you're going to be fine with that. Like I say, if you've got two power amps, a plasma TV, a PC and a really big monitor, yeah, that could probably burn up quite a few amps. Again, common sense, just don't overload it. However, some extension leads can only take 5 amps, right? And I've seen 5 amp extension leads with 13 amp fuses in. That means that, you know, this thing could be drawing 10 amps and that fuse won't blow because it's a 13 amp fuse, but it's still going over the 5 amps that that cable's rated at. Let me just show you what happens, right, if you overload a cable. Right, we're in the shed now, okay, now I've got to say this, don't try this at home anywhere, just don't try it at full stop, okay, it is actually quite dangerous, so just don't even go there, alright. Now, this kettle can draw anything up to 10 amps, alright, when it's only just started boiling. Now, this lead can take 15 amps, that's fine, that's, that'll do fine, however, that little thin piece of wire there is only rated for 1 amp. Right, now let's imagine that is your 5 amp extension lead with a 13 amp fuse in it, okay? Fancy a cup of tea? Yeah, let's have one. Oh dear, that's not looking good, is it? Now that could very easily start a fire because that wire is just going to get hotter and hotter until eventually the wire itself just melts and breaks the connection. Of course that's long after it's already set fire to your carpet. So always make sure that you read the rating on the back of the extension lead what the wire can take, okay? And make sure you've got a fuse in there that matches it. Don't ever put a greater value fuse in there than that can handle because otherwise bad things can happen as you just saw, and actually use a fuse. I've even seen twisted tin foil used as a fuse before. Point taken, let's move on. Right, next, grounding, okay? You need to make sure everything is grounded properly. I'm not talking about an audio level, I'm talking about the earth wire in your plug, all right? It's there for a reason, okay? It's there to protect you and whatever's plugged in, right? To protect you from electrocution. Right, if you're a DJ, a mobile DJ, or you even own any equipment or a studio or anything, okay, one of these things is a must, right, this is a multimeter. No one has any excuse not to have one of these, you can get them for four quid, okay, and the four quid ones work just as well as the 30 quid ones. Don't think you've got to spend money on them, seriously. Any thing you need to do, test batteries, test grounds, anything like that, these things will help you out a boatload to so get yourself one. And they're perfect for DIY stuff as well, but they will all have a little thing called a continuity setting, which is basically a little picture of a buzzer. And if you put it to that setting and then touch it together, you'll get a beep. Okay? Now what you need to do is connect one to the earth pin on the plug, and then touch the other end on an unpainted surface or a screw or a shiny bit of metal or something on your bit of kit. If you get a beep, obviously it's grounded. So like say for example in there, so I know there's a connection there, so I know that's grounded. That's all you've got to do. Now, one last thing, okay? This mainly applies to mobile DJs or if you're going to be having like a garden party or something like that, okay? If you're going to be using one of those long 15 meter extension leads, right, and you think, oh, you want 5 meters of it, and you've got like another 10 meters of it raveled up, yeah, unravel it, unravel the whole lot, don't leave any of it still cooled up on the lead, okay, because every cable emits a magnetic field, and if you curl it up like that, 
that magnetic field is going to be rotating and that's going to get hot and it could have the same effect as what you saw out in the shed earlier. So there you go, just a couple little tips that will save you a massive headache blowing fuses and stuff like that and a few safety tips as well to keep you safe. So there you go, I hope this video has been a help, I hope you've enjoyed it, thank you for watching, nice one, practice and enjoy.